You know, one of the questions that a pastor often gets asked is, how can I know what God's will is? And people want to know, you know, how to live in the will of God. And, and sometimes that is hard to understand, and it's hard to discern what exactly uh, I should do in order to be in God's will. There's some decisions that we make. But there are some things that are clearly laid out for us, and we're told this is the will of God. And this passage is one of those places. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And if you've got your note sheet there, you can kind of follow along with that. And here's what the Word of God says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So what is God's will for us? That we give thanks in all situations. And that's not just good situations, that's even situations that we live in right now. What do we do when we live in the middle of a pandemic? We give thanks. What do we do when we can't get together as family at Thanksgiving during a pandemic because of concerns? We give thanks. What do we do when an election is not real clear on what the, the results are? We give thanks. In all circumstances, we give thanks. So if you've got your note sheet there, you'll see that little blank and make sure that you write in that word all and maybe circle that. Because God's will is that in every single circumstance of life that we need to give thanks. There are opportunities for giving thanks in the midst of it. And it's not just that we come into a Thanksgiving season uh, like this week, but in all of life seasons whether it is January 1st or February 14th or Friday the 13th, in all circumstances, we give thanks. And so the life point that you see there is that God's will is that we practice more than occasional thanksgiving. He calls us to thanks living. So if you want to fill in that blank there, that word is living. So we often come to this time of year and we are happy about Thanksgiving uh, and we, we get excited about this time of uh, year and this year it's a little bit weird. I mean, last week we kind of went on the emotional roller coaster of our daughter and her boyfriend making plans to come up and then the, the plans get changed in a very exciting way and, and Sandy reads this and she's just about to come unglued at Walmart that they're planning on sticking around to Sunday after church and I got excited to read that. But then in a later conversation, a couple of days later, they're having second thoughts about coming at all. And so it's kind of the, the pin in the, the balloon, and you just feel the, the burst of the emotions and realize we may not be able to do that. And so all the plans that we have for Thanksgiving are kind of up in the air. But you know, that does not put a pause on a thankful heart. And it does not put a pause on gratitude. Nor should it, even if everything were normal and we could get together with every single family member, should that be relegated to just one time of the year. And if you're like most families anyway, there's a whole lot more attention on the turkey than there is on actual Thanksgiving, isn't there? I mean, if, you, if your family has been like a lot of my family celebrations or other families that we've had the privilege of celebrating Thanksgiving with when we were far away from family and we couldn't make it home, there's really not a whole lot of time on giving thanks. The, if anything, there is a token prayer that's given before the, the turkey is carved and, and there's a blanket kind of thank you, God, for all your blessings. And it's maybe 30 seconds a minute if it's a really spiritual family but not much else is there. And you go from the turkey maybe to football, and if you're not into football, then you just go comatose uh, from the turkey and all that that brings. And, 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 and if you're like some, you're grabbing the ads for the Black Friday specials and you're plotting how you can be so thankful for everything that you haven't really expressed, but you're planning on all the things that are gonna fill your life because they're missing and that's really going to satisfy. And it's kind of a strange thing how in American culture we have moved from a day of Thanksgiving, which was originally a day of fasting, not feasting. So when the early proclamations came out, it was a day to do without in order to be able to focus on the Lord. And, and now it's become fully a day of feasting. And certainly we have the pilgrims to thank a lot for that. 
but, but we focus more on the food and what comes after on Black Friday than we do on actually being grateful. But you know, even if it were a day that were properly celebrated with much thanksgiving, with talking a lot about the things that we're thankful for, thanking each other for the things that they have done and the blessings that they are, thanking God, we still don't limit it to one day. That's not what it's about. There are actually a lot of benefits to gratitude. Uh, think just for a moment. What are the benefits of a grateful heart? Can you think of anything? Peace. What else? Joy. Anything else? There's actually been quite a few studies that have been done on this, and it's rather remarkable. One is it makes you happier. People who tend to be grateful people tend to be happier people, joyful people. They tend to be more likable people. No one likes to be around someone who's grumbling all the time, a negative Nancy who's always c complaining, and no offense to any Nancys that are in the audience, uh, and, 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 but nobody likes to be around that. Do you? you don't like to be around that. I don't like to be around that. And it just makes you more likable when you're someone who has a heart of gratitude. It just changes everything. Most people who are grateful live healthier lives. You know, as Sandy and I are, are hearing the prescriptions that people are taking, uh, probably the most common uh, medication that we see that seniors are taking, if they're taking nothing else, they're probably taking one of these. It's a blood pressure pill. There was conversation about that even this morning. And, and studies have shown that people that are generally grateful people that express gratitude have lower blood pressure, that they, exp they have improved sleep quality, they have less physical pain, they have reduced depression by a remarkable 34%. It is amazing to me how many seniors come in and on their list of medications, there is an antidepressant on there. And, 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 and just by simply incorporating the regular discipline of gratitude, of thanks living, the, the depression levels go down by 34%. There's fewer physical symptoms, 20%. There's, it induces relaxation. There are fewer doctor visits. We were talking about copays just this morning. And, and if you want to save money, be grateful. What a crazy thought. Uh, it, it boosts your career for those of you that are still working. Uh, it, it, pe bosses like employees that are more likable. And we've already seen that gratitude improves that. It boosts your, uh, your self-esteem, how you see yourself. Even though nothing may be different about you, just by simply being grateful, it improves your self-esteem. You're more optimistic. Uh, you have more energy. It is amazing to me because of you know, being in sales and hearing different speakers talk about sales, very uh, successful people, uh, people that have made it, you know, that are making the millions and all of that. One of the common things that I have heard in listening to these multimillionaires has been of, of all the things that they practice, the common thread has been gratitude. What an incredible thought that that is. That when you're, if you were to just give me a list of things of how to be successful in American life today, that's probably not one of the ones that you would express yet for almost every single one of them, they've listed that about number one, number two in their list. Wow. So whenever we hear this is God's will for you, God's will is always for our good, isn't it? Whenever he tells us something, it's not to make life miserable, it's to improve our lives. So why is it important because that, that God tells us this is his will for us? Because we tend to be just the opposite. You know, we, we have that gravity that just tends to pull us around. We hang around people that are negative. We listen to the news. We listen to the radio. We listen to all the different things that are bringing negativity into our lives and we can get just drawn and sucked into that black hole of negativity. And God says, mm -mm. in all circumstances, give thanks. So this is a call to thanks living. So at the title at the top, just write that in there. Thanks living. That's what the Christian life is about. That's God's will for us is that we would be living thanksgiving every day. So how do we live a life of thanks living? Number one. We keep looking for God's blessings. Keep looking for God's blessings. 
Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. He has already blessed us. And he's not just blessed us a little bit. He has blessed us with every single spiritual blessing. Whether you think you have it or not, you do. And that's one of the amazing realities that we see in Ephesians 1.3 is that he has already blessed us. And we have every single spiritual blessing already give to us. You don't have to wait for blessing. You are super blessed already. You are blessed beyond your comprehension. There are unseen blessings that you don't fully realize yet, but they are already yours, every single Christian. This week I had um, a person walk by in, in Walmart, and uh, I, I, you know, they, they, we said they exchanged the highs and all that, and I said, how are you? And they said, blessed by the best. And I thought, that's a great answer. Not only are we blessed by their best, we are blessed with the best that God has to offer. You ever notice that you see what you're looking for? It, you, it, if you want to see negative things in the world, you can find that pretty easily. If you want to see good things in the world, you'll find that if you're looking for them. I, I, I remember when I got my first car, it, it caught my eye in the used car lot. I was getting ready to go uh, to college, and I'd kind of been looking for a car, and this one caught my attention. And it was a, probably a car that you don't ever remember seeing on the highway. This was a 1988 Renault Medallion, a French car. And I thought it would look exquisite for me to drive in the French car. It was a piece of junk. <laughs> but, you know, I'd never seen one before. And I thought, I'm going to have a unique car. And that's probably why it was a unique car, because it was a piece of junk. I called it the Road Warrior when it was actually quite the opposite of that. It was more like roadkill, but, you know, that's, that's the way it was. Uh, you know, it, it just was not a great car. But what I began to notice after I got that unique car that I didn't think I'd ever seen before, whenever I would drive back and forth from Louisiana to Dallas where I was going to college, I would see those cars on the road. And I don't think I'd ever seen a Renault Medallion before. At least I wasn't aware of it. But as soon as I got that car, I saw those cars. But when my car died, I guess all the other ones died too because I didn't see them anymore after that a whole lot. But if I ever were to see that again, I would probably spot it before anyone else would and say, look, a medallion. And, and, and that would be about all it's worth, but it's a medallion. And, and you see what you're looking for. People that are looking for bad things in the world, they see it everywhere. People that are looking for God's blessing, they see it everywhere. It's all about that mindset of understanding God has already blessed me with every single spiritual blessing. That God wants to bless me more than I can ever understand. That I am a child of God and he is pouring out his blessing and his blessings surround me and they fill me and they move me in every aspect. And if you want to see God's blessings, look for them. Because we see what we are looking for. So look around for those things. Take just a moment and, and think. What are the ways, and, and you see this on here, what are three spiritual blessings you're thankful for? Take just a moment and think about that. Not the material things. Not family. Because if I were to ask, what are you thankful for? Family would come up various things, I've got a job or I've got the ability to retire, those kind of things are, are going to pop up. I want you to think specifically about the spiritual blessings. What are three spiritual blessings you're thankful for? I'm going to give you a minute or two there. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay. What else? Notice that verse down at the bottom, Psalm 35, 18. I will thank you in the great congregation, in the mighty throng, I will praise you. It's talking about being in the family of God and letting your thankfulness be known. So in being kind of obedient to that and, and, and exercising that, what spiritual blessing are you thankful for? Go ahead and say that out loud. I thank God for, and you fill in the blank. Go ahead and say that whole thing. I thank God for, 
For what? Salvation. Salvation. What else? Mercy. Mercy. Oh, yeah. It's happening right there. Yeah. <laughs> what else? For the, Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace. Peace. Even in the midst of all of this, of all that we have going on in 2020, with 2020 being all the way 2020, we can sit here in church and say these things, and it's true. And we can say these when 2020 ramps full up. Or as I saw the, the, the Facebook post this morning that says, don't worry, 2021 will get better. And then it had like the Facebook fact checker faults, you know, on, on top of that. Even if 2021 does not improve, we can still praise God and thank God for all the spiritual blessings because those are not made null and void by anything on earth. He has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. It is untouchable by the circumstances of life. So if you find yourself eating a turkey lunchable for Thanksgiving because no one else is there and there's no one else in the family that's able to come, can you give thanks? You bet. Because it does not matter if you've got family around you or not. It doesn't matter if it's November or another day of the year. We give thanks in all circumstances at all times. Amen? So secondly, how do we do this thanks living thing? We avoid coarseness and complaining. We avoid coarseness and complaining. Listen to Ephesians 5, 4. Nor should there be, in, be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. What an interesting contrast. Here, Paul reminds us that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it should not be a thing where a person should wonder whether or not you are a Christian by the way that you talk, by the things that you joke about. And so all of these things are out of place for a believer. Obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking. None of those have any place in the life of a Christian. But what's put on the other side is not clean jokes, clean talking, wise talking. What's put on the other side is, interestingly, thanksgiving. Hmm. What an amazing thought. Now, here's another one. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Philippians 2.14. So here's the life point. The real enemy of thanksgiving and thanksgiving is not ingratitude. It's coarseness and complaining are. That's an amazing thought. Now, why is that? Because below that level of, of ingratitude are probably two different things are, that are leading to that. The ingratitude is a symptom of something deeper. One is coarseness. Coarseness hardens our hearts. Coarseness hardens our hearts. The other is complaining. Complaining blinds us to God's blessings. Complaining blinds us to God's blessing. Listen to this statement by Paul Tripp. Complaining forgets God's grace. It ignores his presence. It fails to see the beauty of his promises. It allows the display of his splendor in creation to go unnoticed. It questions his goodness faithfulness, and love. It wonders if he is there and if he cares. It, if you believe in God and his control over everything that exists, then you have to accept that all of your grumbling is ultimately grumbling against him. That's sobering words. The reality that when we are complaining, when we're grumbling, we're not necessarily just complaining or grumbling about the situation or about people or circumstances or events. We're ultimately complaining about God. We are calling into question his goodness, faithfulness, and love and basically saying it ain't good enough. And so complaining is a great hindrance to gratitude. 
I like the words of Adrian Rogers, and I wish I had his resonant voice because it sounds so good when he says, you can choose to be grumbly hateful or humbly grateful. At about as close as I can get to Adrian. Oh, that I had his voice. I love the way that he can succinctly say something so good that you can either be grumbly hateful or humbly grateful. And what a difference that makes. That is the difference between a heart that is, that is living and thanks living and one that is living in a world of negativity. And we have so much negativity that comes our ways. And I, I see it in people that have a steady diet of news or news radio or talk radio. Uh, people that are just looking at all the things of life and it just, it's just oozing out of our pores. And we are called to something far, far greater than that. Yes, we need to be wise in the world. Yes, we need to be understanding. But more than anything, God's will is that we would give thanks in all circumstances. So how do we live this life of thanks living? Number three, we express gratitude. We express gratitude, number one, vertically to God. And we can see this over and over in the Psalms. We read this in our responsive reading this morning, but there's so many different places throughout Scripture. With Psalm 136, verse 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. You see that refrain over and over and over through the Psalms. There is that call, that beckon, that invitation to come and, and give your gratitude to God, to actually say it, let your mouth speak it, not just to feel it, but to express it. But we also need to be careful that we are expressing it horizontally toward others. Listen to Paul's words in Ephesians 1, 6. He says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. So we, we need to not just give thanks to God for people. We need to express that every now and then to each other, don't we? And, and, and not get all weird about it, but just really say, I really appreciate you. I thank you for what you have done. To, to say those words to each other, to build one another up. We, we need to be above the immaturity of childhood that gets all weird when we say things that are really honest and, and open and loving to each other. We, we're, we're believers. We are Christ followers. And, and so we, we move past the culture of the South to the culture of Christ to say the things that we ought to be saying to one another. And men can say this to men without being unmanly. This is a man of God. And you dare not question his manhood in any way because of the things that he went through for the sake of the gospel and came out victorious in all of them. I'm not half the man that Paul is. And Paul is a man that was filled with joy in part because he is a man that is filled with gratitude. When you read his letters over and over, even the Corinthian church, which is the most problematic church, he's able to say, I give thanks for you. I never stop giving thanks for you. And that is an important thing to thank God for people and to thank people before God. That is the real key. Uh, uh, Mr. Ward made this statement. He says, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it away. We, we too casually feel gratitude and we don't say it. God calls us to give thanks in all circumstances. So certainly we are in a season of thanksgiving. And just kind of by way of maybe an exercise to help you, not just for Thanksgiving. And it would be good so that we don't go just into another turkey day, which is what it really gets minimized to being. But to really be a th day of thanks. I, I've, I've, I put this... Like this, normally I would take a note sheet like this and print it front and back, but I've left the back blank for you so that maybe you can take this even this afternoon at free times during this week and begin to list your blessings. List the things that you are thankful for and then begin to 
thank God for those things. And when you see people's names on there, to make sure that you express that to them. That you express that gratitude for someone who's been that blessing in your life. Let's live with thanksgiving. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you want better for us than what we want for ourselves. Father, we live in a weird day and we live with a lot of negativity around us, but I thank you that you have given us a cure in the midst of us. And and so, Father, I pray that we would be able to live lives of gratitude, that we would have eyes that are open to see your blessings all around us. God, open our eyes and help us to always be looking for the good that you have brought into our lives, for the blessing that you have brought in. Father, I pray that you would help our hearts to be guarded against complaining and grumbling and, and for coarseness. Father, may we have lips that speak gratitude often. May that gratitude be expressed to you constantly. May our hearts be like Paul who says, I thank my God for you always without ceasing. Father, may we have that same kind of expression toward one another. May we build one another up with those words of gratitude. And Father, I pray that it would not just be simply for a day, a season, but it would be for all the days of our lives that we would live lives of thanks living. Only by your grace can we do that. And I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would enable us to do that even now. So God, we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. May the Lord richly bless you today and always.